An action is a real act of will only when a momentary impulse in the form of a concept or idea acts on the characterological disposition. Such an impulse then becomes the motive of the will. The motives of moral conduct are ideas and concepts. Egoism is the pursuit of individual happiness. The idea of one's own or another's well-being becomes the motive of the will. The principle of producing the greatest amount of pleasure for oneself through one's action, that is, of attaining individual happiness, is called egoism. Pure egoism is when the attainment of this individual happiness is sought by ruthlessly considering only one's own well-being and striving to attain it even at the cost of the happiness of other individuals. Pure egoism becomes morality of prudence when individual happiness is sought by furthering the well-being of others either because one expects to gain from it indirectly or because of the fear that upsetting others will endanger one's own interests. The particular content of a person's egoistic ethical principles will depend on his ideas of what constitutes his own or others' happiness. A person will determine the content of his egoistic striving according to what he considers to be the good things in life, luxurious living, hope of happiness, deliverance from various evils, and so forth. Another kind of motive is the purely conceptual content of an action. This content does not refer to a particular action as in the case of specific ideas of what brings one pleasure, but rather to action that is based on a system of ethical principles. These principles in the form of abstract concepts can govern the individual's ethical life without him having to trouble himself about the origin of the principles. In that case, we simply feel the moral necessity to submit to an ethical principle which, in the form of law, controls our actions. The establishing of the moral necessity of an ethical system is left to those who demand our moral submission, that is, to whatever moral authority we recognize. The head of family, the state, social custom, the authority of the church, or divine revelation. Another example of these ethical principles is when the law does not come from an external authority, but comes from within ourselves. Moral autonomy is to impose moral law on oneself. In this case, we believe we hear the voice to which we must submit in our own mind. The expression of this voice is conscience.